All right, what's up everybody? Welcome to my channel. This is Casual Fishing and uh, this channel is dedicated to those casual fishermen. So obviously I'm never gonna go pro. You guys might go pro, I don't plan on it, but the simple fact of just being out on the water, whether that's bank fishing or being in a boat like this one right here, just being out fishing, catching fish. If you're not, Even if you're not catching fish, you just love being out there. And that's what I love doing. I love being on the water, whether or not I'm catching anything, Obviously, it's way more fun if you are. So, uh, but today I want to go over do a review on a our boat that we have. It's a uh, little mini bass boat. I've had it for a couple months now, and I wanted to use it for a while before I did a review. So I had a kind of an idea of what I was working with here. And so this is the Field and Stream Angler Ten, and we got this boat right in the middle of the pandemic. So everything was sold out. And so I, I originally had the uh, Pelican Bass Raider on order, but it had been like three weeks and still no updates And so I canceled that order and I went to my local Dick's Sporting Good and We just picked this thing up and it was only $7.99 So it's not like the cheapest boat, but it's not the most expensive boat You can spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a, on a like a Ranger or a bass fishing boat So this is a budget boat for, for real and uh, I want to kind of go over the you know pros and cons of it all really just kind of give you guys an idea uh, I couldn't find any videos on this particular boat. I think I found one out of all YouTube. So basically, long story short, I just kind of want to do my review after we've had it for a while. So we've had it for a couple months now. What I really like about this particular boat is it is a pontoon boat. So I don't know if the camera can kind of view down here and just kind of see. You can see in between it. It's got two big old fat honking pontoons, which means that it's very stable meaning you can stand on this boat you can have two people on this boat standing at all times and it's not going to rock it's not going to tip over you're perfectly fine the other thing i love about this boat is the perfect size for two people so usually i have my wife with me and if we're both standing i like to just push the chair down slide it all the way back up i get this spot right here this fish she folds her chair down slides it kind of in the middle and she gets the front and it's plenty of room for fishing for two people and uh, I think it's great. The thing I love about this particular boat is the seats. So they're pedestal swivel seats, but I really like that it came, came with the cushions already on it. So it's very comfortable. You can fish for hours. I was just out the other day for six hours by myself fishing and I never got uncomfortable. And the floor, I mean, it's kind of rough. I mean, it's not rough, I would say, but it is solid. So it does maybe, it could affect your feet if you're up standing all day, but I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, so the thing I like about it is that there's a lot of like little nooks and crannies too. Like it has two pole holders in the boat already, you know, comes with it. We mainly use it just for our, um, what's it called, the net. So it's pretty great. We uh, basically, I'll, I'll kind of go over also kind of the customizations that we have of it. But we have just some string or rope tied up front so when we're docking it, we can just real quick unclip it, wrap it around the dock. It doesn't go anywhere. It's it's fine. I like this boat because it has a lot of like compartments and things like that. As you can see, it has a lot of cup holders, some like shell. I don't know what these are, not shelves, but just grooves that you can hold things. We don't really use them a whole lot for actual cup holders. I kind of throw my bait in there, or not my bait, but like yeah, bait I guess if I'm ready to switch out real quick. Um, so it's not really practical for a cup holder, but it does have a lot of room. Uh, typically, we only use. Um, you know a couple of things or bring a couple of things with us we usually have our well we have our uh you know our tackle box which goes you know right under the chair right out of the way not in any way and then we have another bag that simply just goes right here like a cooler bag for our lunch or waters and things like that so it's a pretty great boat very stable um easy to maneuver so i'm just going to go over real quick uh, some of our things that we have on it some of the customizations it's not really that customized, honestly. It's pretty basic, but here we go. So obviously for the uh, power, we're running the uh, Minn Kota 55 pound thrust, uh, 42 inch shaft. The cool thing I like about this is that it has this telescoping handle so you can get a little bit more reach with it. And it, this is a perfect amount of power. Um, it gets the boat around. It, uh, on our GPS, it shows that we can go up to about 3.5 miles an hour. So you're not breaking any speeds, but hey, you're out there. So uh, the cool thing, we have the uh, battery inside this powerhouse, or I guess it's a power center. 
uh, Minn Kota. It's kind of cool. It has like your battery indicator. If you press it, you can see how much battery you have. Uh, it's got some breakers so that you can, uh, you know, you don't blow out the motor. These breakers will go first and then some auxiliary. So if you want to plug in a speaker or whatnot, it's pretty cool. Some other things that we have that we use, we just put another care, you know, rope tied to a carabiner. So another point of uh, security on our docks when we're docking up. I, uh, the cool thing about these plastic boats is that you can drill holes if you have to customize things. So if you need to put rod holders or anything else, you can cut, you can drill the holes, not worry about it. Uh, well, this is what I did right here. I use these Scotty rails. Uh, there's uh, eight holes in here that I had to drill and yeah, I just used some putty, some marine putty. It was pretty simple, didn't damage the boat. No water gets in there. Uh, coming around the other side, I did the same thing over here for a rod holder. It's really great, very convenient, especially if you're trolling for trout or things like that. And then I did another one right here for our transducer arm. This is uh, pretty pretty neat. It gives you some ability to see the you know topography topography of the of the water that you're on you know lay downs and th things like that, that you might not be able to see and i tried to keep it as organized as i could in here i tried to uh you know strap everything down with some velcro so that wires aren't just like flinging around i ran it all the way up the side i had to drill a couple holes for these little things uh to kind of keep the wires down some more velcro velcro is your friend on these boats because you can do a lot of things with velcro especially like for instance this battery for the for the uh transducer or the uh, depth finder I literally just put velcro on it it does not move when I when it's in the boat some more velcro projects that I did was for this paddle it's it's a must you have to have a paddle for these boats especially if you're docking or you're going on to shore because you want to go to the bathroom or you know swim or whatever you want to do bank fish because you can why not you need these things you just lift up your motor so it's not dragging on the bottom use this and it moves it around just fine and it's 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 very it's basically a perfect situation but you have to have it just in case your battery goes out and you're screwed and you got nothing and then you're hoping that the wind is drifting you to where you need to go which is never happening so and then we have the uh, garmin i think this is a striker four it's pretty basic it's not the most fancy one you can get but it does the job it tells us water temperature it tells us depth it tells us if there's fish it's pretty basic but you know, the things that I don't, you know, really, the thing, well, the things that I love about this boat is really light. So I think I said it was 10 feet, three inches long. Maybe I didn't, but it's also only 135 pounds with nothing on it. And so if you have to load it onto your car, like our Subaru over there, uh, we, we could put it on, we could put it on the roof. We did, we used to put it on the roof rack by our, you know, just the two of us, or even I did it by myself. It's doable, but we have it now on a trailer just a flatbed trailer that makes it a lot easier to load and unload. You just pulled up like a regular boat, drop it in the water and you're, you're good to go. So, um, the things that I don't really love about the boat is, like I said, the compartments are kind of a little awkward. I mean, they look nice, but they're not very practical. You're not really going to put, you know, cups here because they're going to fall over. And also the thing I don't love is we usually have about like six to eight or no, like yeah, six to five, six to five, five to six rods, rods and reels at all times. And when you stack them here, this thing kind of raises up and it's kind of like a middle pedestal platform. And it kind of keeps the, it kind of has an off balance for the rods and reels. So they don't really lay there that great. So they're kind of like pointing in different directions. And so you just gotta be really aware of that. And so that you're not stepping or kicking or nicking your the tips of your rods you don't want to break your rods so and then the other thing too is that this boat is very light when you're on the water and it has a high surface area so wind really affects it so if you're on a windy lake and you don't have an anchor down or you're not using your trolling motor you're drifting and it's interesting because we've been up we've been up up, up against like other uh, kayakers and they're like completely still they're not moving anywhere because they have such a low profile that the wind's not pushing them but this thing gets pushed very dramatically with the wind but other than that i think this is a great boat this is definitely a budget boat this is for someone who just wants to get on the water not wants to spend a lot of money but it's just looking to have a good time and you can be on the water we've been on water for four or five hours easily you know 
and not have any problem. The battery lasts for a long time. And uh, we just, after the, after the day is done, I'll just put it on my charger, call it good, get it ready for the next time. But uh, yeah, that's it. So this is the, uh, the Field and Stream Angler 10. It's a great bow. Perfect for a budget fisherman, perfect for the casual fisherman, and uh, just a great little boat to get on the water. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave a comment in the comment box. And also, you know, if you find this interesting and you want to see more stuff that we're doing here at Casual Fishing, just go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button. And, uh, you know, because why not? You're going to watch hundreds of videos if you're like me. I've been watching hundreds of fishing videos. We're going to have tips and tricks. We're going to have reviews. We're going to have it all for the casual fishermen. We don't claim to be pro. I am not a pro. So, uh, But I do enjoy what I do. I love fishing. And I uh, thought I'd just share that passion with you guys. So feel free to hit that subscribe button and just uh, let me know what you think. All right. Bye.